Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here in the series. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. In the last episode, we kicked off Season 7, uh, creating this news feed application that is uh, quite bare bones at the moment. There's nothing on screen as you can see, but behind me here you can see the code to actually reference uh, a node in the real-time database. So inside of our uh, Firebase project here in the real-time database, uh, we dove into I guess the structure of the database, how it's used, how you can add things to it, manipulate it, etc. Um, and then we got it from the app here where uh, we're listening for any changes that happen to uh, essentially this node here. So if you missed it, I'll put a card in the top right. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, you're also not far behind. And otherwise, we are just going to continue moving forward here. So I'm going to remove all this code here. We're going to put it inside our repository class. Um, and I'm just going to comment it out because that's not the goal of today's video. Um, Firebase is a wonderful tool, the real-time database, but there is also another wonderful tool, uh, as you can guess from the thumbnail, data binding, that we have not made use of on the channel yet. It's been requested a few times, so I am uh, just going to go ahead and have this video act as an introduction to the idea of data binding, what it is, how it works, and then we will use that inside of our application as we build this out. So specifically, uh, the one thing that you need here inside of your app dot, uh, or your build.gradle file that exists in your app module uh, is a build feature. Maybe it's with an S, I don't know if it's the proper syntax. Uh, and then you're gonna say data binding true. So I hope that this, uh, that this worked out and it's complaining. Uh, here highlighted because it's telling me that we need to put the Kotlin capped plugin in uh, the project. So we'll also just add that in real quick. And then we'll click sync now. Everything should be good. And that's it. Our project is ready to go for making use of data binding. So we can go ahead and close this file. That's all we need. Um, and then we can go ahead and actually modify our layout file here to make use of data binding. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is you're going to take any old layout here and we are just going to take this entire thing, we're going to command X to cut it, and then we are going to turn our root uh, element here into the layout tag. Now we're just going to take some of these uh, little attributes here, namespaces, and put them here. And what this allows us to do is basically we still have the same exact UI, nothing has really changed. However, inside of this layout field, we can actually uh, create a, another element here uh, called data and then within that we can go ahead and add in a particular variable and so let's just say uh, the variable is going to be text on screen and then the type for now is just going to be a string. What we can do is make use of this variable within the context of this layout. So here we have Android uh, colon text equals delta news, quite simple. And so I'm going to change this to be tools, so that's what it's going to see in the emulator or in the uh, editor here, but that's not what it's going to be in, uh, in in practice. If we were to run this right now, nothing would happen. There wouldn't be any text set on our text view. But what we can do here is we can actually reference the variable that we defined earlier, and we can do so by this syntax. So we use, inside of the quotation marks here, we put in the at symbol, then we have our curly brackets, and then we can reference basically our object or our variable as we see fit. If this was an actual object, like maybe a domain layer object, like let's say user, and the user had a bunch of different properties on it, you would be able to in here say, you know, user.name or something along those lines, and it would fetch it accordingly. Uh, clearly that's not set up, but point is, is that you can actually reference certain fields in an object. So then bouncing back to our activity here, nothing has changed. However, now we can get an instance of this data binding class that gets generated for us and, and then we can start to play around with it. So I'm just going to go with the classic binding and this is the activity news feed binding. The library also comes with a data binding uh, util class here that's helpful for activities and in here we can actually call set content view with this and then the particular uh, layout resource ID for the activity and basically this is going to not only set the content view which we're so used to here uh, but it will also return an instance of the view binding 
uh, right here, this class that has been generated for us. So then we can make use of this file inside here. Uh, then very easily we can say binding dot text on screen equals hello. So what we've done here, we've gone ahead and basically combined the set content view with a little helper util that comes with the library to inflate this particular layout here into this activity. Then we also store the result in a local variable that we can then reference. And if we were to command click on this activity newsfeed binding, it will actually bring us into our layout file. And so because we've annotated it appropriately, or I guess created it appropriately where we have layout as the root element in here, and then there are uh, some other you know, data points in here. Um, the system, the library knows to generate basically this binding class for us and then gives us the ability to manipulate or access the variables there. So basically we can then say binding.text on screen, which is going to reference this particular variable right here. And then our text view that's defined in the center of our layout, its text attribute is set to whatever text on screen is. Right. So if we were to just rerun this application, I'm sure you can kind of imagine what's going to happen here. But instead of seeing Delta News here, we should see hello with an exclamation point. And while this still seems to be building here, I do just want to note that there is pretty good documentation out here, um, you know, as part of the developer.android.com stuff. So uh, on top of documentation, there is also code labs and whatnot that you can go through. I will link this in the description so you can get to it, uh, but there's even more that you can read about here with the entire data binding library uh, and, and really everything that it has to offer. Uh, so check that out in the description if you are interested. And now if we bounce back to our emulator, we can see when we start it, it says hello. And so if we take this one step further here, we can actually make use, or I could kind of show you the reactiveness of the uh, data binding library. So data binding also is basically just an extension on view binding. So if you're familiar with view binding, all of the idea of being able to reference a particular view from the actual binding class that gets generated, all that stuff carries over here. So if our text view had an ID and we just called it text view, we can then reference that text view inside of uh, our code just like this. Don't need to do find view by ID. Um, so really just a wonderful transition away from that and then data binding just sits on top of view binding which gives you this flexibility here so let's say binding dot text view we're gonna go ahead and just post delay in action here for let's go with two seconds 2000 milliseconds and basically at this point what we're gonna do is change it from hello to hello again right so all this code is gonna do is it's originally going to bind hello two seconds later it's going to update uh, the binding, the data bindings variable text on screen to have this value instead and we'll see it update in the UI. So as you can see there inside of the emulator, uh, it started with hello, it ended with hello again. And we didn't actually do anything to reference setting the text or anything along those lines. This works because of the way that we've defined things here inside of our uh, little layout file. We have this data node or information and then we have you know another variable here uh, and then our text view is basically just reacting to this update that we provide to it after some later date. Okay so building off of this here I'm going to show you how to just make use of uh, live data from a view model to kind of connect up to your UI layer. So we've basically just created a simple live data here that is of type integer. We're using the uh, KTX extension function here to basically turn this into a live data. And then we just sit um, in a while true loop, delaying for 200 milliseconds, emitting a number, incrementing that number, delaying again, emitting it, etc. So this is basically just going to count upwards for us. And this live data is going to get updated every time we call emit with number being a new value. So similar story here, how we have the text on screen, what we can do is we can also, uh, you can define multiple variables here inside of this data tag. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that and let's just say live data and it is going to be of type com.dmp.delta news and then the news feed view model. Maybe live data isn't the best thing uh, to name it actually, it should be more so the view model. So we're going to attach the view model, this type right here, um, to this little variable defined here. And then we can actually just make use of that uh, information here and say view model dot live data and that's about it. 
because it knows that it is of a particular type here um, that we've defined, it is a-okay to just kind of have it say view model dot live data. It looks a little weird, but we are setting the text basically to the value of whatever exists inside of the live data here. So we can uh, we can just comment this stuff out, yeah, just for simplicity and whatnot. Uh, and I do think I just need to create the view model itself equals the view model provider this and then we're calling the get function here with the news feed view model class and that should about do it um, that should bring this up into uh, memory and then everything will be all good there so if we just go ahead and rerun this now we should see something that just starts counting for us okay guys I do apologize there uh, there are a few things that I just overlooked and that's that that's my fault here so uh, two important things obviously we need to set the binding uh, the data bindings view model to be the view model we've instantiated otherwise we just never kind of connected the dots so that's just a silly oversight on my part but something else that is extremely important once we start using uh, the view model class is that we need to set the lifecycle owner of the actual binding itself. Um, this is because there is no, you know, view model dot live data dot observe that we're doing, right? The library is handling all of this, and because of that, one of the key things that you need when you create an observer for a live data is a lifecycle owner. So we do need to provide that information to the uh, binding, the data binding generated class, so that everything kind of works and basically the system under the hood can use that lifecycle owner to observe the view model and observe the correct live data that is a part of it. Uh, also, I had to change string, I had to change the string dot value of this integer because actually when it's an integer, it spits out a number and it actually just tries to load like an actual uh, string resource <laughs> with that particular integer value so it, uh, it it just won't work so basically we want the string value of whatever integer it is and if we go ahead and rerun things here everything should be up to speed so as we can see here this just starts to count it does exactly what we were expecting it to do and yeah it's really that simple uh, just a little bit of overhead but once it gets up and running here you can just define new variables reference those variables inside your layout and then you basically just you know modify the variables or set the variables or whatever the case is inside of your code and your UI just reacts. It's actually uh, pretty nice, pretty significant, um, and I'm pretty excited to dive into this season making use of this a little bit more. All right, guys, and as you can see here, just one last thing I wanted to show you, uh, we kind of can make use of this information in a new way here. So you do notice this uh, little square that's down here that we put in. We just define a 50 dp by 50 dp view here with a particular background and then we set the rotation value to be the float corresponding value of whatever exists here. So we are tilting it 120 degrees, uh, now 130 degrees, and if you look really closely you can kind of see it shifting um, you know, as you would expect. If we were to just go ahead and let's see what happens if we change this to just a 50 millisecond delay. And now we can see here that it's actually quite sped up. I guess it's four times as fast. And you can see this element on screen rotating. You can see this element uh, here counting for us. And clearly the UI is being updated without us really doing anything other than just connecting a few pieces here between our data, our variable, our layout, and then the actual views themselves making use of everything we've given it. So uh, there is still a whole bunch more that we can cover inside of the data binding I guess discussion or topic, but let's leave that for a little bit later as we dive into it when we just come across things that need to be done, uh, you know, inside the application and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here. Really, just wanted to introduce this idea of data binding and that we're going to be making use of it this season. Uh, so hopefully, if you are excited for that, that is just really good news. Uh, if you made it this far, please consider dropping a like. It really helps me out, helps the channel out, and uh, hopefully, it'll help others out. Uh, surfacing this content to them if they're looking for it and if you notice you are not subscribed and don't want to miss out or want to stay up to date or want to support me or all the above uh, please consider subscribing so thanks again I will catch you in the next one where we're just going to continue building out our little news application here and we're clearly going to make use of data binding so I'll see you then